When God created Earth, he instructed his angels to adorn it with beauty to the most distant regions. The youngest angel, deciding to take a shortcut, bumped into a mountain peak and spilled all the splendor across the surrounding valleys. According to this old legend, the border area between Slovakia and Poland was created. The mountains of the High Tatras. Over time, tales of magical powers in the cliffs and horror stories about wild beasts kept people from invading the forests of the High Tatras. Even today, visitors are rare and many of the valleys are unpopulated. And so it seems as if the old magical spells are still in effect, as if the High Tatras were a wilderness frozen in time. The Tatras were considered no man's land until in the 13th century, after the war against the Mongolians, a Hungarian sovereign decided to strengthen his northern frontier by new settlers. For centuries, sheep farming has shaped the character of the region. Until this day, when spring has come, the sheep are driven up to the mountain pastures. The shepherds stay with them until autumn, when the first snow starts to fall in the mountains. Here, whey is produced by the shepherds, as well as different kinds of sheep's cheese. The flocks of sheep must be protected day and night, because an unwelcome guest can come from the deep Tatra valleys any time. Where the pastures end, the High Tatras National Park begins. This is the habitat of dozens of brown bears, which are particularly hungry during springtime. The sheep are lucky. The bear is more curious than hungry. Three hundred million years ago, the restless earth poured out masses of burning entrails, which changed to solid Tatra granite in the cold climate. Geological processes and the tireless activity of rock-grinding glaciers have formed the Tatras to their present shape, providing an ideal playground for daredevil mountain climbers from all over the world. Fifteen thousand years ago, the glaciers of the Ice Age retreated. They left behind them more than a hundred mountain lakes.
razor edge ridges divide the former glacial valleys, whose dark, dense forests nowadays form one of the last sanctuaries for European wolves. A wolf pack can travel as many as 70 kilometers per night. Even high mountainous terrain is no obstacle. The selection of prey and the hunting strategy is top priority. An alpha she-wolf is in command. The others follow her orders. Today, she chooses a solitary wild boar. be dangerous. <laughs> the boar manages to escape but the wolves know that its days are numbered. A red trace unmistakably leads them on. Even though the brown bear is a carnivore, it is not a good hunter. Therefore, it's not particularly choosy concerning its diet. Patiently and with great skill, it looks for the honey of wild bees as well as berries, but also for the leftovers of animals killed by wolves. The wolves follow the trail of the wounded boar. The wild boar is dead. The starving wolf pack found it before the bear tracked it down. The leading alpha couple starts to feed first. The number two in the hierarchy, the beta wolf, plucks up the courage and attempts to participate in the feast. Some other members of the wolf pack follow his example. However, the alpha she-wolf clearly demonstrates who comes first. Just like the Alps, the Tatras are a high mountain range. Even so, one can find approximately 1,400 different plant species here. Many of them are endemic. They do not exist anywhere else. These glacial relics effortlessly defy the extreme weather conditions predominating the Tatras. In summer, a morning frost is common here. Sweltering days alternate with severe storms, hail and snow.
The quiet and remote valleys offer sufficient tranquility to the wolves for giving birth and raising their cubs. In a wolf pack, only the alpha couple enjoys the privilege of courting, mating and giving birth. No one knows how many wolves inhabit Slovakia. Experts estimate approximately 300. In the national park, they are under protection. Beyond its borders, though, hunting for wolves is still allowed during two months of the year, and Slovakian hunters take extensive advantage of this. The lynx shares the fate of the wolf. It is also in danger of extinction. For the lynx, the loud howling of the wolves is a clear warning to leave their territory. It must look for food somewhere else. In the Tatras, the lynx is frequently forced by the wolves to move to the highest mountain regions. But its excellent sight and hearing enable it to survive, even under the most difficult conditions. Soon it knows the behavior of each chamois, each marmot in the colony. The lynx preferably hunts for ill, weak, or old animals, causing it to play the role of a kind of mountain health service. This marmot species has been living in the Tatras since the Ice Age. The colony safeguards its territory by a cleverly devised early warning system. Marmots and chamois form a symbiosis. The chamois recognizes the difference between the marmot's whistles, announcing eagles, lynx, or humans. Marmots also react to the warning whistles of the chamois. The biggest delicacy is flowers. Most of all, they prefer the young sprouts. Now, for a few short weeks, summer rules in the high Tatras. The lynx has discovered a strange creature. It's not quite sure, though, whether it's worth pursuing.
The Tatras are the only European mountain range where alpine chalets are supplied by Sherpas. Carrying loads of up to 100 kilos, they have become a tourist attraction. This old-fashioned torture has a lot to do with tradition and with the pride and respect for their profession. But it is also a pleasant alternative to the helicopter noise one finds in other mountain regions. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Hungarian Carpathian Association started to build a chain of chalets and hiking paths leading up to the highest Tatra summits so that visitors can enjoy a bird's eye view. The Tatras do not only consist of beautiful landscapes, they form a real high mountain range, at least as dangerous as the Alps. Crosses at a symbolic cemetery near the Poprad Pleso mountain lake bear witness of tragic accidents, which also befall experienced locals from the Tatras. A motto hanging on a chapel gives us pause for thought to the memory of the dead as a warning to the living. In the autumn, mountaineers meet here to pray for their friends, whose love of the mountains was stronger than their fear of death. During the rutting season, the chamois change their behavior completely. The otherwise solitary and phlegmatic males flock around the females. They clearly mark out the territories of their interest by the smell of a secretion produced by the glands behind their horns. The intimidating ritual can lead to an attack at which the chamois try to wound their rivals with their horns stabbing at the sensitive area of the loins. By means of natural selection, the fight determines the winner and founder of the coming generation. Therefore, the privilege of mating with female chamois is awaiting him. When the fierce battles are over, the herd calms down. The exhausted chamois are resting. Now they try to gather strength before the onset of winter. And then, overnight, the cold drifts into the mountains. Deer cluster together in need of warmth and protection.
the winter starts to rule in the Tatras with all its strength. This is the most exhausting period of the year. The falling winds can reach hurricane strength, as during the legendary storm year of 2004. The storm cut an aisle into the forest, which was more than 50 kilometers long and in places up to five kilometers wide. It has changed the face of the area for decades. The inhabitants of these rugged mountains are used to weather catastrophes, especially the Gorals, which have been living in the border area of the Tatras since the 15th century. In the Polish community of Zakopana, traditionally winter is the time for weddings. An eagle feather on the hat symbolizes the courage of a young man. He has to search for it in the highest cliffs of the Tatras. For young girls, it is a sign of strength and masculinity. The life of the Gorals is determined by their belief in God Almighty and by the mountains that cast shadows over their houses. During the height of winter, the chamois herd mounts the rocky ridge. The wind has uncovered meager tufts of lichens and grass here, which are inaccessible in the valley as they lay under a thick layer of snow. The long-lasting winter is a severe ordeal for all living creatures. The lynx is looking for frozen animals, victims of the extreme frost, starvation and deep snow. The numerous herds are moving closer to human settlements. There, they are safe because predators will not dare to approach the human dwellings. For generations, people here have been feeding red deer to help them survive the long winters in the Tatras.
The predominantly spruce forest has always been a source of wood, serving not only for the construction of houses, but also for heating. Horsepower is still used for the extraction of wood from remote places. The lynx has noticed that a hungry bear has woken from its winter sleep. It pursues its traces. Eventually, it comes across a killed stag, which could not escape from the bear in the deep and wet snow. The stag's entrails are scattered around its dead body. The lynx knows that if it wants to catch prey, it must conceal its own odor. The smell of the carcass is perfect for this purpose. The European otter is in danger of extinction as well. In the Tatras brooks, it fishes for trout, crayfish, as well as frogs. In winter, it migrates to waters which never freeze. And on its way, it often travels from one stream to another, moving across the high mountains. The otter can sense that spring is coming. It slowly moves downwards to streams in the middle and lower ranges to hunt for prey. The traditional Easter celebrations are a highlight in the lives of the people of Lendak, a settlement in the eastern Tatras. The villagers dress in their traditional habit and praise God for letting them survive the winter and celebrate the approaching spring.
During the early spring days, black grass cocks start their duels. The goal is to win the favor of the inconspicuous drab-colored female. Grouses occupied in courtship displays can be an easy prey for various predators. Here, even a small buzzard tries its luck. The snow in the Tatras finally melts away. The little chamois, which has just been born, is already trying to keep up with its mother. The chamois mother knows well that her cub is an easy prey for golden eagle, fox or lynx. After seven months, the typical piercing whistle of the marmot is heard in the mountains again. In April, in the higher forest regions, one can frequently hear the characteristical chanting of the caper Cayley in courtship. In the morning, the cock comes to a courtship ground, and even before dawn, it starts its declaration of love. When daylight comes, it joins the grazing hens. The lynx is searching for new nests. Its attention was caught by a three-toed woodpecker. It seems to be in luck. A young pecker falls out of the nest after a fight over food with its siblings. With the fresh vegetation on the mountain meadows, the long period of fasting ends for the deer. And where there is enough prey, the predators turn up as well. The potential prey keeps away as far as possible. In the springtime, the forests turn into a huge nursery school. A female bear teaches her cubs to look for food, surmount obstacles, and hide in case of danger. 
Standing upright, she tries to locate possible sources of threat, usually being human. A couple of lesser spotted eagles hatched two offspring, but only one can survive. The older one kills the younger one, or simply pushes it out of the nest. Shortly before the beginning of summer, gorals from both sides of the border meet at one of the peaks to honor their forefathers. It is from them that they have the knowledge of how to live and how to survive with dignity in these rugged mountains. In the forests, the season for migration has begun. The two to three year old bears are on their own for the first time. Bears are born in winter and usually stay with their mother for two, sometimes even for three years. The bears are siblings. They're looking for food in a secluded valley. They have little experience and are very hungry. Today, they would not even refuse earthworms. As with the wolves, there are no reliable figures regarding the population of brown bears, but their numbers are growing. An estimate of about 800 live in Slovakia. The brothers part company. Whilst foraging, both are constantly in danger of getting close to human settlements. Especially when territories and food become scarce. Ha <laughs> ha 
In the High Tatras, bears and humans are frequently in conflict with each other. But the bears do not always get off as lightly as in this case. In order to prepare their offspring for a long flight in late summer to southeast Africa, the lesser spotted eagles will have to supply many more small mammals to the nest. Lesser spotted eagles return to the same territory every year. So like its parents, this young eagle will also come back to bring up its offspring. The most spectacular nesting places are reserved for the golden eagle. They are found in the steep limestone walls of the Belianska Tatras in the northeast. The 1,200 kilometer long Carpathian arch reaches its highest point in the High Tatras. Ten mountain peaks exceed the height of 2,600 meters, the highest of them being the Gerlach Peak, which is accessible by one of the most impressive hikes the Tatras have to offer. The lynx advances into unknown terrain. During their long flight to the south, migratory birds often choose the water sides of the high Tatras lakes for resting. Wild ducks even breed here and bring up their offspring. The lynx seems to be totally at a loss with hunting for prey in the water. At first glance, the shepherds appear to be living a romantic life. However, hard work goes on from early morning to evening. During the day, everything seems to be fine, but nightfall is a definite cause of concern for the shepherds. The bear, which has recently attacked the shepherd's hut, will certainly come back. Moreover, the wolves have also come near to the farm. Not long ago, they killed 30 sheep in a nearby valley.
Sometimes when food gets scarce and competition grows, wolves resort to attacking sheep flocks. They've been observing the shepherd's hut for days. convenient time for their attack. However, it seems that the sheep pen is well guarded by the Chuvach dogs. The wolves already know the routine. They wait until the sheep are driven from their enclosure to the pasture, like every morning. The alpha wolf is watching the flock and waiting for the right moment. One after the other, the wolves wallow in sheep excrement in order to conceal their odor. This will enable them to draw nearer to the sheep, whose sight is not the best. Suddenly, the wolf pack starts its attack. The dogs won't dare to stand up to them. Working together as a team, the flock of sheep is separated in order to pick out the weakest animal. The wolves' tactics were perfect. However, the fear of humans remains greater than their hunger. The outcome of the stressful morning, a nervous flock and one wounded sheep. The shepherds have experienced worse. Long ago, wolves were the most widespread and successful predators on Earth. Yet with mankind, they were confronted with an overpowering competitor, hunting for the same animals and claiming the same territories. Today, wolves, as well as all the other great hunters, will only survive if mankind is willing to let them. Their territories have shrunk to a mere few hundred hectares. If animals are fortunate, fate will lead them into the High Tatras National Park. The unique landscape seems to originate from a book of fairy tales. The forests are dark and dense, the mountain rifts and peaks are wild, barren and solitary. More effective than any law, the flora and fauna of these mountains are protected by their rough climate. Man can only be a passing visitor in the high Tatras, driven away by the first autumn whims. With the return of the fog, the storms and the snowfall, the High Tatras are once again frozen in time. 